For this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the five number summary in the TI Inspire graphing calculator. When you are finding the five number summary, what you are looking for is the minimum value, the first quartile, the median, or also known as the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum value of your data set. If you were doing hand calculations, you must first put all of your data values into order from smallest to largest. But since we are not doing this by hand, it does not matter the order that we are putting it in. All right, so what I'm going to do is I already have all of these values written out on a sheet of paper for me so that I can just enter them in from my sheet of paper. If you need to pause the video after I show you how to get into the spreadsheet and come back to this data set, then do so. So let me grab my calculator and I'm just starting from a new screen. So I'm gonna just start with a new document. And in the new document, it's gonna ask me what I wanna add. So the first thing that I wanna add is a list in spreadsheet so that I can put in all of my data. So I'm gonna choose option four, add lists in spreadsheet. It's important that you name your data set. So for this one, because it doesn't have any context, I'm just gonna name it data. Okay, and then I'm gonna enter in my values. So I'm just gonna start with the five and continue down until I have all of the numbers on my sheet listed in. Like I said, if you need to go back to the screen that has all of the data values and enter it in yourself, if I'm going too fast, you can do so. Okay, there were 11 data values total, so I know I have the correct number. I always go through and make sure that I didn't mistype anything. So I always check my data set with what I have on paper or what's on the screen to make sure that I did not mistype any data values. So once you've checked your data and you found that you did not make any mistakes, you're going to hit Control and I, and I wanna insert into this a calculator screen. So I'm gonna choose option one, calculator. I'm then going to go to menu, and because we're dealing with statistics, I'm gonna to go to the statistics menu. So it's menu and number six, statistics. So you can either use your mouse to highlight on it, or you can just hit the number six. I find that usually is easier. Okay, and then after I get into the statistics menu, another menu comes up, and I wanna to go to option one, stat calculations. So choose option one, stat calculations, and you can find the one variable statistics. So I'm gonna choose option one again. Okay, so that was menu, option six, and then one and one. The number of lists, we just have one, so we would just hit enter on the screen, okay. My X1 list, you can either hit this arrow over here and see what variables you have in. The only variable that I have is data, which is why you have to name it, because otherwise if you don't name it, then you won't be able to pull up any values. Okay, um, the frequency list we don't need to use because we don't have any frequency, so we just leave that as one. That means each of the values only occurs one time. And the rest of the information you don't need to worry about. So right now we're gonna hit okay. And what comes up is all of the summary statistics. So it gives me the mean, it gives me the sum of the values, it gives me the sum of the values squared, the sample standard deviation, the population standard deviation. It tells us our sample size was 11, and then it gives us our minimum, our first quartile, median, third quartile, and our max. So those are the only things that you need to know from this screen for this particular problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go back over to my screen and write them down. So we found that it was five, seven, 15, sorry, five, seven, 13, I looked at the wrong place on my paper, 16 and 27. So just to recap, in case you were confused on that, again, it was menu, option six, option one, and then option one again and then you enter in your data. Make sure that you select the correct variable of data and click OK. And then it will give you the information. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.